Welcome back to Hey Kentucky. Now we decided to get ready for our debate next week in the governor's race by looking at the three major Democratic candidates and spending a day in the life of them. Ryan Lemon went with Andy Bashir, Chris Tomlin with Rocky Atkins, and tonight we'll show you the first one. Drew Franklin spent a day with Democrat Adam Edlin out on the trail, and here's what he found. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Adam Edlin. All right, Adam, I want to ask you the big question first and foremost. What made you decide to do this, and why is it so important for you to run for governor in Kentucky? Well, I'm, I'm running for governor because Kentucky's moved in the wrong direction. We are chasing a low-skill, low-wage economy that just doesn't exist anymore. Uh, we are pursuing policies that will result in Kentucky uh, not being a place where our kids and grandchildren were going to want to realize their version of the American dream. And I just know how to do this, Drew. I mean, I know I am creating the jobs of the future. I am working with business. I do have a background in government where I'm known for fighting corruption. And I just think this skill set at this particular time is the right thing. And it's why I'm running for governor. It's why, I, you know, I'm not sure I was the right guy four years ago. I'm not sure I'll be the right guy eight years from now. But Drew, we've got to give Kentuckians a fighting chance in a changing economy. And the policies that we're pursuing, the direction we're going in, uh, is, is not that of a modern Kentucky. And so we've got to embrace our future. It's coming whether we like it or not. And so the opportunity to do the big important thing is why I'm running for governor. You, you said you know this is your time, but at what point did, let's say, A, know at all you wanted to run for governor one day, and B, when did you know this was the time? Well, being governor of Kentucky, I think, is the best job in the world. I mean, it's a, it's a I think this is the best place to live in America. I think we've got more un untapped potential than any other place. But the reason that we chronically underperform, the reason why we get mediocre results is we tend to elect mediocre leaders. So I'm, I like to do big, important things. I've got a record of it, and I guess I've always wanted to be governor. It's a great job, but I'm more interested in doing the job than having the position. And what would you say sets you apart from the gentleman you're running against? Well, I'm the only candidate for governor who has a, a record of new economy job creation, and I'm the only candidate for governor who has uh, fought public corruption resulting in a lot of crooked folks going to prison. And I think those are the two attributes that a Democrat is gonna to have to have to beat Matt Bevin in the fall. When you're meeting the voters in these small communities, what are some of the stuff they're telling you and asking you of you? They are really worried about that they're not connected to the internet. They know that coverage is spotty. They, there are a lot of people who are worried about the jobs of the future. They're worried about the opioid, the drug crisis. And more than anything, they're worried about just being, their, their communities being relevant to the opportunities of the new economy. What I hear more than anything from parents and grandparents is, Adam, help us build a state where we can keep our kids here. And we've not done that in Kentucky in a very long time, and the result is showing. And I want to make sure that, that Drew, for, from your age to mine, we've got lots of friends who live in places like Atlanta and Nashville and Charlotte. And I'm just sick and tired of seeing Kentucky's great people move out of state to find great opportunities. But if you want to create opportunity here, you got to you got to bring in people who know how to create it. Well, instead of continuing this discussion as we try to cross this busy intersection, let's go have a cup of coffee. Let's and I want to know more about Adam Edelman, the man. You got it. So I've caught you in the middle of a very busy day. Yep. I assume all days are busy for you. They are. These times. They are, dude. We're covering about 2,000 miles a week in wow. state. So it's a lot of ground, but we got in late and we've got ground to make up and we're getting it done by hard work. Give me an example of what a typical day would look like. like so it, it starts early in the morning and it seems to involve going to Louisville at some point during the day almost every trip. And I live here in, in Lexington, but we're spending a lot of time out in the state. You know, we start by seven in the morning, uh, usually try to get home by 11 or uh, 11 or midnight. And there's a lot of stops in between. And it, it, it involves interviews like this one, Drew. Uh, we're doing more town halls than anybody in the state because I think folks have a right to know what you think and who you are. And it also affords an opportunity to listen. And, you know, obviously there are events, there are fundraisers, there are, you know, meet and greets, meeting with people in local communities to talk about how we can make Kentucky better. So it's a, it's a busy time for sure, but I, I really love the work and I don't get tired uh, until I get in the car. And people can follow those town halls, right? They do, man. I mean, we, we live stream almost everything we do on the campaign because you want to be transparent. So I want to get to know you a little more personally. Sure. There'll be plenty of time to learn about the issues, yeah. but I just want to learn about Adam Eagle. Obviously, you don't get any days off right now. Right. But if you were to have a day off, what, what are some of your hobbies, interests? So it, it just depends. If I had a day off now, I'd want to spend it with my boys. So I've got 13-year-old twin boys who are just a hoot. Um, I also have a great group of friends um, where we just sit around and make fun of each other. 
and it keeps me sharp. So I'm obviously ready for any debate because I've got the most clever friends in the world and, and we like to sit around and make fun of each other. Um, but I like sports. I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a big UK fan. I'm a big Atlanta Braves fan. Oh, me too. I yeah. Know this about yeah, you. yeah, man. No, this is uh, America's team, bud. We were both we're, raised we're good at again, 705 too. and yeah. we're good again. Last year was such an awesome surprise and who knew that this Acuna kid would be as good as he is, but it, it's, it's remarkable. So I'm a regular guy. I have regular interests. Um, I enjoy the company of my friends. I like being around my family and I like being outside. So, you know, whether it's throwing pitch with the boys or hunting and fishing during the season, these are the sorts of things I like to do. Since you are a big UK fan, I'll make you take a side on one of the most important issues in the state right now. John Calperi's lifetime contract. For or against? I'm for it. And a matter of fact, I, I ran into Mitch Barnhart on a, uh, on a flight last week, and, and uh, he said, you know, Adam, you're doing well. And I said, not as well as you. He said, what do you mean? I, locking down Calipari was really smart. And listen, this is the, he, is, he is the right guy at the right time for this job. We've had some bad luck. I think we probably ought to have three national championships. Yeah. But we're going to get there, man. I mean, if it weren't for bad officiating last year in Memphis, um, we beat North Carolina, we're the national champions. It will come, but the fact that we are part of the conversation every single year is incredible. Uh, I do hope that there is a codicil in that contract that he consider calling a timeout every now and then. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of fans yeah. have a couple complaints like that. But he's the band, and so if his only thing is that he frustrates me with the lack of timeouts, I'll get over it. Well, I'm going to tell on you, I might have seen you, I think it was the SEC tournament. Oh, I could yeah. see you from across where I was yep. sitting. You were really getting into the game. You're a very passionate fan. I am a passionate fan, and um, I'm, I always get in trouble because if people can read lips, but not near as, as animated as my wife, who you know looks like this you know really proper Southern Belle, um, but dude at a Kentucky game when the call goes the wrong way, Melissa Edlin can cuss like a sailor. <laughs> I bet a lot of people watching can relate to that. Yeah, no, I, I would think. Earlier I asked you when you knew you wanted to run for governor, but when did you know at what age that you would just get into public service whatsoever? So I'm a, far always the path? I'm, I'm a farmer's kid, mm -hmm. Drew. So the thing about growing up amongst farmers is they always come in for lunch and they all read the newspaper and I was and we listened to Paul Harvey on the radio and it was just a place where my, my you know the my elders talked about UK basketball and public affairs and so I just got interested at a very early age in current events and I was the kid who read the newspaper and I care a lot about stuff that's happening around me and it was just this sort of natural progression of being interested in current affairs and being interested in the news and listening to people argue and debate about what's best for the country or what's best for our community, that just instilled a love of public service in me. And I've always known that I was going to be involved in some form or fashion. Um, I didn't know that I'd be running for governor at 44, uh, but I'm sure excited about it. Were there any influences, whether it be political or an old Braves player, somewhere along the way? Yeah, Dale like, Murphy inspired <laughs> my career, man. No, no, no. I mean, he, great guy, make no mistake, probably best center fielder we ever had. Um, uh, yeah, there were influences. I mean, my grandmother was this extraordinary sort of Southern woman who was active in politics at the most local level and taught me that um, public service is a demonstration of our commitment to each other. And part of it's spiritual. A lot of it is example driven. But, you know, I'm somebody who got curious in history as a kid. I mean, I, I, am, uh, I was the oldest of all the grandkids. Um, I, have, uh, I have siblings, but they're a lot younger than me. So I, and there were aspects of my childhood, dude, that were a little lonely. So I read history, and I fell in love with history, and you add that to the family influence of being interested in, in the news, and it just sort of conspired to take my life in this direction. Well, I know you're a busy man today. I appreciate you taking time to sit and chat with me. We'll be hearing a lot from you in the weeks ahead, and uh, good luck with everything. Thanks, Drew. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Adam Edlin will be one of the three Democratic candidates who will be on our debate next Wednesday night. I'm moderating. The other two candidates, Andy Bashir and Rocky Atkins, their profiles will be Wednesday and Thursday. We got more Hey Kentucky right after this.